Mmm, that looks so good. Oh, hi guys. I didn't realize you were here already. Um, I was a little bit distracted with some yummy pizza. And although the pizza plays a part in what we're talking about today, it's not the main part, so I'll just put it down. Uh, we're actually talking about kings, lions, and fires. And today, we're specifically going to be talking about being devoted to God. Devoted. What could that word mean? Uh, for some of you, if you have something that you really love, like say playing sports or doing crafts, you understand a little bit about being devoted to something because if you love it, you'd go out and practice, try to get better at the sport, give it extra time and effort, or maybe with a craft, you'd go out and try to find new stuff, new materials, new things to work with, new ideas. Uh, and so you're devoted to that because you actually care about it. Being devoted to God is a little bit like that, but it's also deeper. And we're going to learn a lot about that today from none other than the Word of God. The cool thing is, is that the Word of God is full of examples of the people back in the day who were devoted to God, devoted to Jesus, and how they walked that out. And one of those examples can be found in Daniel chapter 1. See, we're going to talk about Daniel, and we're going to start it right from the beginning. So let's dive in, okay? <clears throat> Daniel 1 verse 1. It was the third year that Jehoiakim was king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Whoa, Lena. These names, oh my goodness. Maybe we can call him King Nebi? Let's call him King Nebi. So King Nebi was king of Babylon, and he came to Jerusalem. His army surrounded the city and attacked it. The Lord handed Jehoiakim, that was the king of, Ju of Judah, the, over to him. King Nebi also took some of the objects from God's temple and he carried them off to the temple of God in Babylon. Uh -oh. Not a good, good idea. He put them among the treasures of his God. Ooh, right there, we got problems. The king then gave Ashpenaz an order. Ashpenaz was the chief of King Nebi's court officials. And the king told him to bring some of the Israelites the king wanted them to serve him in his court. He wanted nobles, men from the royal family. He was looking for young men who were healthy and handsome and who could also learn anything or well-educated. That's a long list, isn't it? Well, his main man, Ashpenaz, he managed to find some and he brought them to Babylon. Now, Ashpenaz was supposed to teach them the Babylonian, the Babylonian language and writings. The king and his servants gave them food and wine from the king's own table. They received a certain amount every day. Mmm, that's making me hungry. I'm smelling that pizza, and I'm thinking about the food. The young men had to be trained for three years. Okay, maybe not as much as the time that you're gonna spend in school, but still, when you've already done a whole lot of learning and then you're being forced to learn for three more years, hey, yay, yay. after that, they could begin to serve the king. Now, some of those men that were chosen were from Judah. Their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief gave them new names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar. He gave Hananiah the name Shadrach. He gave Mishael the name Meshach, and he gave Azariah the name Abednego. More names, guys. Trust me, it's hard to memorize them all, but I believe in you. Pick up your word, dive into it, give it a go. Daniel decided to make himself, not to make himself unclean by eating the king's food and drinking his wine. What does that mean? Well, you see, God had been really specific with his people about the food they should eat and the food they shouldn't eat. And a lot of that was because God knew. He knew that what was best for their minds and bodies was a certain specific diet. And Daniel knew that he... probably shouldn't eat certain food from the king's table. When the king's man found out that Daniel and his friends were only eating the vegetables and the things that God told them they should instead of enjoying all the other food that was available at the king's table. He told them this, I'm afraid of the king. 
He is my master. He has decided what you and your three friends must eat and drink. Other young, young men are the same age as you. Why should he see you looking worse than them? You see, he was convinced, this guy, that if they only ate that food, they would end up looking uh, not as strong, not being as smart, not being able to do as many things as the other guys. He continued and said, when the king sees how you look, he might kill me. So Daniel spoke and said, uh, he spoke to one of the guards, the chief official had appointed over him and Daniel said to him, please test us for 10 days, 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat. I dare you to do that challenge. And give us only water to drink. Then compare us with the young men who eat the king's food and drink the king's drinks. After that, see what, how we look, and after that, do what you want. So he agreed. He tested them for 10 days. After the 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked healthy and well-fed. Go God. In fact, they looked better than any of the young men who had ate the king's food, so the guard didn't require them to eat the king's special food anymore. He didn't require them to drink the king's drink either. He gave them vegetables instead. God gave knowledge and understanding to Daniel and his three friends. So they understood all kinds of writings and subjects. Eh? Food for thought, literally. And Daniel could understand all kinds of visions and dreams. The three years that the king had set for them uh, for their training ended. So the chief official brought them to King Nebi and the king talked with them. He didn't find anyone equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they began to serve the king. He asked them for advice in matters that required wisdom and understanding. The king found their answers to be the best. How's that, guys? The answers Daniel and his friends had were 10 times better than anyone else. How amazing is that? They devoted themselves to God, even though everyone else was doing something else. Even though people told them, no, 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 you don't understand. This is better for you. This will work the best. They stuck with what God told them to do. They were devoted to God even when it wasn't easy to be because they loved him so much. And you know, how does this fit into our lives? Well, think about it. Do you have uh, maybe some people in your life, maybe kids that you want to be friends with, maybe people you see at school and you think that person's so cool. You really want to impress them. But some of the stuff that they're doing day in and day out, it's not what God would want you to do. And they tell you, now nah, come on, you can do it. It'll be cool. But you know what God has told you. You know what's right. Being devoted to God means choosing in that moment that I love God and I want to honor him with my actions and my words, even when others are telling me to do something else. It's not always easy, but it's the right thing to do. And you know what's cool about that? God made them the smartest and strongest people. He's got your back. The right friends will come along. He'll bring the right things into your world and he'll ensure that you have everything that you need. He's got you. Devote yourself to God and watch him do the rest. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much that when we devote our lives to you, you are there for us. Lord God, that even when it's hard, you give us the strength and the courage to continue to love you and to do the right thing. And we thank you, Jesus, for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. This was fun, and that pizza smells really good. 